Hello, War Fighters. War is hell. Welcome to the next episode in the series where we're taking a look at what could have happened had there been a second Korean War. The two factions that exist right now in North Korea following the death of Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il are about to go at each other for the very first time. But before we get too deep into why, let's go ahead and hit the briefing. So in the last episode, this is where we saw the lines were drawn at. There had been some progress by South Korea, the United States, and their allies, but even more progress had been made due to the shortage of supplies that exist in North Korea. And it doesn't look like things are going to be changing anytime soon. Now, back here in Chorwon, there's been a general who has sworn allegiance to the hardliners that hope to continue what Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il were doing. I'll be playing as the reformers who don't think that that was an acceptable choice to make. So what we're going to be doing is eliminating him to try and send a message to everybody else. What we're going to do is we're going to capture this North Korean position that's part of uh, the route that brings supplies down to the front. Once we take it out, we're going to set up an ambush of a convoy that we'll then use uh, to be able to kill this general. And you'll see how we do it here in a little bit. Now, the hardliners, of course, they're the ones who are really having the major supply issues. However, those who are for reform are backed by the Chinese government. They've been supplying weapons, ammunition, food, just about everything uh, they can to those who have uh, sworn loyalty to those who want reformation. Now, China wants to exert as much influence in North Korea as possible and is really looking for an opportunity here uh, to really be able to control what happens from here on out and to really be the uh, real winners uh, should things continue on this way. So again, this is going to send a message to a lot of the generals who uh, are on the fence or have sworn allegiance to the hardliners here. Maybe make them reconsider. Now, I'm going to be equipped here with some Chinese weaponry. You can see I've, rather than the RPG-7, which you know I usually have when I'm playing as North Korea, I've got a Chinese RPG. And then also, I've got a QBZ-95 as my rifle. Now, since there hasn't been any real hostilities between the two factions quite yet, we do have the element of surprise right here. We know that there's going to be some patrols uh, between us and our main objective. And really, they're not going to open fire on us. They think we're just all one big happy North Korean family at this point who's just having a little bit of a dispute uh, in the power vacuum that exists. Uh, but that's about to change here pretty quickly. Now, normally I'd be sticking to the trees here because uh, it does have pretty big open areas, which you're going to see up here. Um, but since nobody thinks I'm really hostile to them right now, it's really about getting to that objective as quickly as, as possible. Now, up ahead, we see our first patrol here of our fellow North Koreans. And I think we're going to open up fire on them right now and take them out here. Uh, that guy's running perpendicular, perpendicular to me, but i able to take him down. There's a guy behind the bush. I'm going to leave him to everybody else. There's this guy in the tree here. For whatever reason, I cannot hit him, even though I know some of these rounds should be going into his chest. Finally take him down, but I'm hit. I'm going to reload here, and once things kind of die down a little bit, that's when I'll patch myself up. All right, I think my guys might have this taken care of. Yep, things are quiet, so I'll take care of myself now. Now, from the looks of it, it looks like we didn't lose anybody right here, which will help us, because once we get to the objective up in front of us here, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, not only is that position have enough people that we're outnumbered, but also they're somewhat entrenched. Now, I don't know whether or not they heard the engagement. Uh, they were like 600 plus meters away, so they should have. But whether or not they're on alert uh, is another story. They're probably expecting maybe some special forces from South Korea or the United States here. Again, they probably don't think that fellow North Koreans are going to be engaging them right now. So as we pop up over this hill, this will really tell whether or not they're 
considering us enemies or reinforcements or what here. Okay, I don't think that they've seen us yet. Now, we are approaching them from the rear of their position, so a lot of them are looking down the road. Uh, up on that tower off to the right, there is a static MG. That's going to be my main concern here, but since nobody's engaged us, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer, just so that way we can take out a lot of them just more quickly since we'll have some more accurate fire. Now, they will too, but as long as we open fire first and take them out, uh, we should be okay. Once we get up over this hill, that's when I think we're going to, to open fire on them, but we'll for sure be less than 200 meters. It might even be like 150 by the time that we get up to the top of this hill. So we'll be in very, very close range to them. All right, everybody's still moving. Nobody opening up quite yet. I'm going to try and go off to the right here and see if I can get into this position. Oh, yeah. We're about 130 away. So I'm going to drop right here. There's that patrol. It's not doing anything, but I'm going to focus on this guy. Open up on him. Nice. He's down. Okay, so now it's just a free-for-all. See who else we can get. These guys have gone prone. Nice. He's down, too. Okay, I think that's pretty much everybody. There's that building that's off to the right that I'm going to have to check out here, too. So we're going to have to make sure that the area around here has been cleared. There's some white smoke, and I'm still hearing just a gunshot every now and then. So I'm going to send my guys just off over there towards the smoke to see if that's where somebody is. But we might have some guys on the other side of this bunker right here too. I'm going to have to check that out. Maybe I'll try and throw a grenade in that bunker. And all right, if there was somebody in there, they've got to be dead now. Inside of this bunker is clear. That one guy is dead. There's nobody looking at me from that house. Oh, yeah. We've got three guys that are right there. Uh, I'm going to have to throw a grenade right there, too. Try and bounce it off the cement. That should get two of them. Maybe not the third. Yeah, I hear somebody yelling. So, maybe. No, it did get them all. That's not bad. Okay, pretty sure that this checkpoint here is clear. Now, down the road, there's like a little farmhouse. We've got this damage structure right here where it looks like there's one guy who's standing in the doorway that's been killed. I wonder if there's anybody else here. So I'm going to... Oh, yep, there's another person that's dead. Try and flank around here to the right. Through this window. Oh, there's somebody in there. Dang it. All right, just got to keep going around. I think I got him in the hip. Oh, I think there's another guy. I saw an RPG. Nice, he's dead too. Now, this is a pretty small house, so... Take a look through here. Yeah, we've got it cleared. The farmhouse up ahead really is the only other thing that I might have to clear in this vicinity. There's no windows or anything on it that I can see on the lowest level. There's these large doors though that I'm gonna have to try and look in, see what I can find. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a grenade in there. If there is anybody, yep, there's somebody at the door. Okay, so he's been killed. Two, three, ah, there might be one more. Just peek around, yep. All right, uh, I've got a few more grenades here, so I could just try and bounce it off of that back wall. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Should be close enough. Once it goes off, let's check and see. Yep, that guy's dead too. Go in here. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to regroup with my guys. What we're going to do now is we're going to clear out all the bodies here from uh, this location. Because we want to make sure that this convoy that's coming down through this checkpoint, uh, once again, thinks we're all big, one happy North Korean families. So if they see dead North Koreans out here, 
uh, surely they're going to have second thoughts about what's going on. Now, we don't know necessarily the size of the convoy. We've been keeping in touch with them periodically just to kind of know when they're going to arrive, which really should be any minute now. Um, they say they've got a pretty substantial force. They're carrying some ammunition for the front. Now, what we're going to do, though, to be able to eliminate that general who is not friendly to us is we're going to take one of those uh, ammunition trucks because we're being supplied by the Chinese. This ammunition doesn't really matter that much to us. Uh, and we're going to go to this compound where the general is at. We're going to blow it up. We're going to kill him that way. So we see the headlights of the convoy coming down here. It looks like that there's an officer who's kind of leading everything in his vehicle behind it. A troop truck. Okay, so there's going to be two of them here. Means we're outnumbered. Great, an APC. It's that BTR we're going to have to eliminate. Looks like there's more. Dang, this is a big convoy. So the officer's gotten out. Um, I've actually dropped a lot of my Chinese gear except for my rifle. I mean, that shouldn't alert them too much here. Um, because they know that China's been supplying some of us here with some extra weapons. But I don't want to alert him that much at all. Okay, so the officer's trying to figure out exactly why we haven't opened up the gate for him. Uh, now, I'm just going to do a quick inspection here because, one, I want to make sure that there is ammunition. I want to see exactly what's in this convoy before we open fire on them. You know, I'm not going to be an idiot about this. If there's another way for us to be able to take out that general, and this ends up being too risky, it, what might, or that might be what we have to end up doing. Okay, so there really wasn't too many people here in that vehicle at the front of the convoy. There's about a squad in this truck. Wouldn't be surprised if we, we see the same thing there too in this next one. But again, that BTR is what worries me. Now, remember, I do have that RPG. So I think once we make the decision to open up here on this convoy, I think the first shot is going to be for my RPG to take that out. Uh, if I can take that out, that eliminates all of their armor, eliminates the guys who are on top, guys who are possibly inside. It should make this somewhat of an even, even fight. Now, even though we're outnumbered by quite a lot here, maybe four or five to one, uh, there's still choke points on each of these vehicles. They're going to have to get out from the back. Once they get out, you know, we can be taking them out one at a time. So we'll be able to go through these guys hopefully pretty quick. Okay, so here's an ammo truck. Now, this is the real reason why I'm out here right now is I do want to verify that there is actual ammunition that we'll be able to use. And there is. Perfect. Okay, so this plane's going to perfection. I'm not going to worry about that truck here too because if this one's full of ammunition, uh, the other one is too. I'm going to walk back, though. Again, I don't want to really make anybody be concerned about what's going on. But yeah, as long as I can get one of those trucks, I'll be fine. I'll be able to move on to the objective here. Now, in just a little bit, all these North Korean soldiers hopefully will be dead. It's weird that we're having to engage our own guys. But these guys are just part of the wrong side right now. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nothing more than that. All right. Once I get back to the bunker, though, I'm going to re-equip some of my stuff here, too. Not only do I have that RPG, but I also have uh, some Chinese night vision, too, which should be able to help me here quite a bit. Uh, it'll give uh, us the advantage here, or at least me the advantage, because it's obvious that these guys do not have night vision or at least they haven't equipped it right now but then again they don't think they're in a hostile area right now the officer up front still talking 
which is good. We've been able to hold him here for this long and really have it spooked him. Because he could give his guys the orders to get out right now. Start engaging us or something like that if he was really worried. But we did a good job cleaning up the bodies. Doesn't know that any fight happened here. I mean, we've had plenty of time, too, to be able to get everything cleaned up. And I guess it does help, too, that it's at night. So if there was anything, he'd be able to see. It'd be a lot harder for him to spot. Okay, I'm going to get up in that same position that I was before here. Having cleared this convoy. If I can get up this ladder. There we go. Yeah, having cleared this convoy... He should be able to move any minute now. But here we go. I'm going to grab this, my night vision, and then also my anti-tank weapon here. All right, this is going to be somewhat of a tough shot because I'm not going to be trying to hit the side, but the front of it. Got to aim this one just right. All right, here we go. All right, officer's been taken down. I think we've got the driver. See what I can do to fire on these guys that are getting out of the trucks back here. Yeah, this is a lot easier with the night vision. Here we go. QBC's... Working out pretty well here. All right, time to reload. Now, I think I've gotten everybody just about here. Between me and the ammo trucks, but there is another truck that was behind them that was loaded with troops. Those are going to be the guys I think I'm going to be worried about the most. All right, we're taking some fire here up at the tower. Okay, so I got to be careful about how I move up. Uh, I'm going to use some of these vehicles here for cover. Maybe get a better view on what's what's going on. Yeah, there's a guy who's up there at the tree. There we go. Got him. I thought I saw a tree fall, too. I'm wondering if one of the ammo vehicles... Yep, there's a guy who's up there, too. Be tough to see him through the smoke. I'm not going to stay out there in the open. Yeah, it looks like the ammo trucks were on the move. There's really not too many places for them to go except back. I'm going to push up here to these logs. This should provide me some cover. Okay, so we've got one of the trucks here just right up ahead of me. Oh, they're trying to flank off to the right. All right that guy's down. Now, we also had some of my guys here off over to the right, too. So, they've kind of been helping out. There's somebody on the road right in front of us. He's down. Yeah, I'm kind of pinned at this location. There's really not too many places that I can go. I'm trying to look up the hill. See if anybody's just trying to escape. Things have gotten a lot more quiet. I don't know if there's anybody else off to the right. Oh, there's somebody crossing the road. Where did he go, though? Poked my head out just a little bit. I started a pretty big firefight. Okay, there he is. He's under, underneath the... And there's him. He's down. I saw another guy underneath one of those trees. Yeah, there he is. Nice. He's down too. I'll reload. There's somebody else out here. Oh, there he is. I 
Believe it or not, having the NVGs off was somewhat helping. Okay, I'll get this guy. There's got to be at least one more guy. It sounds like there might be some more fire. I might just try and make a rush, though, here for that ammo truck. Then I'll head out of here. Yeah, because it's pretty quiet now. We've taken a lot of these guys out. Okay, so... Oh, there he is. Moving off to the left. Is he just trying to bug out or? Yep, I think he is. Dang it. Oh, there he is. I saw his gun fly up. He's got to be dead too. Can't get a good shot. If I just spray into those trees, I doubt I'll even hit him. Gosh, I'm so close to that ammo truck. Cool, that made me think twice. Getting back. I might have pushed up a little bit too far. Dang it, that ammo truck on the left looks like it's been... Pretty badly damaged. This is the only one that's will do the job here. Get back behind these logs and start pushing more to the right. Oh, there he is. There he was. Is that smoke from that ammo truck? All right, I'm making the push now. Try and go quickly as I can to it hop in and get out of here because I don't know if there is anybody else that's back here if there's any time I'm gonna get hit is when I try to get in the driver's seat because there's not that much cover over here throw out the dead guy and all right I'm pretty sure we're clear now I'm going to go around the left side of the checkpoint. My guys are going to be able to get out of here. We'll have that same copper or helicopter that came picked us up uh, to come pick them up here. Since all of the destruction that's here, not going to be able to clean that up. We'll just have to get out of here and abandon this position. They'll stay there just for a little bit longer and kind of go through the area in case there are are any other survivors but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna head back to where the general's located right now so I'll stop on the side of the road here in a little bit and I'll rig the inside of this with explosives and then once I uh, have everything set I'll call in that same helicopter to come pick me up get me out of here and then I'll detonate those explosives once I'm at a far enough distance here that it it won't do any damage to the helicopter or of course kill me at all however if I am spotted by these guys if there's any bit of concern I will go ahead and take myself out if I need to now up ahead is the headquarters here and where the generals located so I've gotten through basically everything here without being spotted or at least anybody being concerned whatsoever I mean we are behind enemy lines well these are North Korean lines so seeing a North Korean vehicle like this with a North Korean in the front really not a problem at all I mean there's plenty of trucks like this that come through all the time Okay, so I'll just enter the base here and then there's one building in particular it's the one that's off to the farthest right we know that's where he works that's where he sleeps 
That's where he should be. So I'm going to park this truck right up next to it. Then I'll try and get out of there. Now, you can see, you might have been able to see how well defended this position is. There's no way I'd be able to fight my way out of this. I've got guard posts with guards in the top of each of these bunkers. There's a whole bunch of guys guarding the general right out front of the base. Uh, at the entrance, there's some North Koreans, too. Okay, so I'm just going to park right here. I feel like that's pretty close to the building. Let them know I'm just here to deliver some supplies that were asked for. They want some papers. I can give them some papers as to who I am and everything. Because chances are these guys, at least a lot of them, aren't going to be able to live to tell the tale of what happened. Now the problem is finding a place to be able to radio in for pickup. So I'm going to go behind this building here. And then what I'll do is I'll call the helicopter in. Now a North Korean helicopter with North Korean markings, everything to be able to land here, pick me up, I get out. There'll probably be some confusion. But again, they got no reason to worry right now. All right, made the call. Here it is coming in. Should be landing in just a little bit. So I'll kind of head back out here to where I know it's going to be landing. You can already hear it in the distance. Get in it quick. Get out of here as fast as I can, too. Still nobody worrying yet. I mean, this is a pretty busy place here, too. Since this general's, as I mentioned, in charge of some reserve forces here. They're about ready to probably push out towards the front, but... Yep, not seen any reaction from anybody yet about an incoming helicopter. Nobody's really worried about what's in there either. It's in that truck. Okay, there it is. All right, so it's on the ground. get in it. I think I gotta get on the other side of this though. Okay, if I get out of here, this will be a successful mission. We didn't lose too many of our guys either. Alright, they're taking off, so I've got my finger on the trigger here. Nice. All right, that general's taken out. That's a message to everybody else. And potentially the opening of hostilities between these two factions within North Korea. This might be a start of a civil war. But it wouldn't be hard to guess who would win such a civil war, should there be one, considering we're well supplied. We've got the Chinese behind us as well. But that's going to be it here for this episode, so thanks for watching. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook by searching Warisel Gaming. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Warisel. And, of course, there's the Patreon, which I appreciate any and all donations there, too, for the channel. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, but War is Hell, you don't have to worry because Warfighters, I've got your six.